Hi, I am Krista McNamara, Managing Editor of ABRN Magazine. I'm here today with Robert Hornito, who's the owner of Pacific Collision Equipment Company in Signal Hill, California, and Tom Ballier, who's the Sales and Technical Manager for Orange and San Diego Counties. Now, Robert and Tom have spoken with ABRN before about um, the importance of measuring and also suspension diagnostics, and they're here with us today to discuss energy management and additional anchoring in the vehicle. So Robert and Tom, thanks for being with us. First, can you tell me a little bit more about energy management control systems in the vehicle? And thank you, Krista, for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate being here once again. Thank you. So every vehicle has, whether that's low end or high end, has an uh, engineered energy management control system in place. Yeah, every hole, every bend, every fold, every convolution on the sheet metal is engineered specifically to absorb energy, transfer energy, and move it away from the cockpit area so that the occupants are safe and secure. It's designed specifically to do just that. What materials are used by OEMs to help with controlling the collision energy? We have uh, high strength steel, ultra advanced high strength steel, trip steel, laminate steel, you name it. There's all kinds of steels of different thicknesses and there can be three or four different steels on one component to control the energy management the way it is dispersed throughout the vehicle. It seems that there could be a safety issue if a vehicle is not repaired properly. Is that a valid concern? Yes, there is a huge concern for safety. If, if any of the collision damage is left in the vehicle, the vehicle just won't react the same in a subsequent collision. So we can show you this in a, a little example here. So here's a standard paper cup. I'm going to put as much downward pressure as I can on it and it doesn't collapse. If I induce just a little bit of damage, it collapses very easily. So improper repairs or even unaddressed damage on a vehicle can really have a huge impact in the event of a subsequent collision? Krista, that's exactly what we're talking about. That's when people get hurt, when stored energy is left in the vehicle. So let me show you a quick video that Honda produced. This explains everything. So you can see in that example, even a hundredth of a second has a huge effect on airbag timing. And, and again, that could be from collision damage that's left in the vehicle, maybe a few millimeters. It could be not following the proper repair procedures, could be using inferior parts, um, using a sleeve and a joint where there shouldn't be extra bonding material, an extra spot weld. Any of these things can affect airbag timing drastically. It is really amazing. and alarming how what appears to be such a, a small difference can really have a huge impact on airbag timing. So what are some of the things that repairers can do to help prevent these issues? So the vehicle manufacturers have designed these new unibody vehicles with energy management control systems for the energy as it goes in in the collision process. We talked about the high strength steels, we talked about the holes and the, the ripples in the metal, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all energy control management systems. In reverse now, when we're pulling the vehicle and reversing that energy back out, we have to do more than just pull on a high strength steel frame rail now. Now we have to isolate our pulling forces so that we're not causing any secondary damage somewhere else. And the old adage where we had four points for anchoring the vehicle is no longer relevant today. We now need five, six, and even maybe more anchoring points so that we don't cause secondary damage and we isolate our pulling forces effectively and remove the energy back out 100% the first time around. Robert, can you explain more about four-point anchoring? So what I mean about four-point anchoring not being enough, the vehicle structure now is so solid and so hard with all these advanced high-strength steels that we need to isolate our pulling forces. So as an example, if your frame rail is bent like this, you're going to hold and pull rather than pull the whole vehicle structure. That's what I mean by four-point anchoring, and OEMs are requiring that. 
Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Porsche, Dodge, Dart. Um, other manufacturers are coming on board with that because they know the difficulty of, of clamping and holding and pulling high strength steels. So you'll see more and more of that as time goes on. Are there any other benefits to having equipment that provides universal anchoring? And what are some of the other trends that we can expect here in the future? So in addition to using the EVO universal fixturing system to isolate our pulling forces, we can also utilize that for parts replacement. So whether the, it's a whole rail section or just an end cap, it's a real easy and simple system to set up and use. Yeah, absolutely. And as you can see on the screen here, we have one, zero, and one. So you're able to dial it in to the OEM required specification. Irregardless as to whether it's high strength steel, aluminum, or carbon fiber, which one of those three is going to exist on every car that you're going to deal with now and in the near future. Uh, you're going to have to bench and fix your every single car. So the trend is to have a bench for every technician in order to be profitable. Something to consider down the road. Do you anticipate it will take longer to repair vehicles this way? Krista, that's an excellent question. I, I like that question very much. Um, I don't think it's going to take any longer to actually repair the vehicle. You're going to have more time in the setup process. You're going to be more detailed as far as where it's going to go and how it's going to go. But the repair time is going to be much shorter because you know exactly what to do. Very simple. Robert and Tom, thank you so much for the information. You know, proper repairs really are a must in the collision repair industry. And we here at ABRN, with the help of partners like Robert, Tom, and Carl Weiner, really do aim to bring you in the shop as much information as possible to make your job a little bit easier. Krista, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to do these videos for the auto body repair industry. We greatly enjoyed our time, and we hope that everybody else has enjoyed watching the videos as much as we enjoyed making them. Yeah, thank you very much for your time and your effort. We do re really appreciate it. To see more videos from Robert and Tom, you can visit abrn.com backslash carliner suspension check and abrn.com backslash carliner video. Thanks so much for watching.